if we can kind of form a circle here. Um, everybody take one of these and bring You can bring, that's the beauty of chairs on wheels is that you can slide them over here. Well, there should be enough for everybody to have one. There should be enough for everybody to have one. So just gather around. So this is the update adaptation of the presentation rubric that I've been talking about working on. Uh, I kind of finished it up last night. Does everybody have one? Do you have one? No. Here. I don't have one. Um, you can either keep one for Chris or it's actually online. So uh, I sent a link to, I believe, I, I tweeted out a link to where this is. I also updated the link in Blackboard. So if you, if you lose this paper copy, there's uh, two ways to get to the digital copy, one through the Twitter feed, one through Blackboard, basically. Um, but what I've done is essentially break down the elements that I want to see in these projects into the, the, the overall rubric. Um, and I, uh, I mean, I just want to make sure we go over this and under you understand how to read the rubric. Uh, effectively, each row is an element that I'm expecting you to have in your project. Okay, then each column is a description of how well you did on that element of the project. So you'll see at the top of the rows, there's exemplary, there's acceptable, there's developing, which is a nice way to say not quite acceptable, and then unacceptable, like y you totally missed the mark on this one. Um, I, I, if you looked at the ones that I had from previous semesters, I had it broken down by A, B, C, or D. I always got kind of hung up on like, okay, what is really the difference between the A and the B in terms of the description or the B and the C? This is a little bit more, Words are better. A, a, a little bit easier to like say, you know, it's exemplary, you know, you, you, you did above what and beyond what I expected. Acceptable means you met the expectations. Developing means you didn't quite meet the expectations. And then unacceptable means you totally missed the mark, basically. So the first item on here is what you guys handed in today, the annotated bibliography. And I'll take a look at these. Um, Basically, it's acceptable if you met the minimum standards. If you went beyond the minimum standards, that's exemplary, okay, uh, for your group, okay. And uh, by the way, this is this is a rubric for grading your group presentation, not for you individually in terms of how you uh, uh, participated in the group presentation. Um, I'm expecting you to you know get up here and give a demonstration with the projector and everything like that. I haven't quite figured out. I, I would like to record them. Um, I'm not sure if I'll record them just audio or record them audio plus video so that the, the purpose there is not to torture you of, like that you're on camera but uh, the purpose of having multiple presentations is that you get better at giving the presentations over the course of the semester and uh, it only enhances that process if you can look back at what you did after you gave the presentation and see you know I really took a lot of time here I need to speed up there, slow down here, that sort of stuff, okay? So uh, anticipate that you will be recorded next week when you give these presentations, okay? In terms of content that you need, one, you need to describe the goals of your project, you know, and that can be as simple as we were going to, like, I was kind of starting to clarify with you guys, you know, it's not just exploring modulation and distortion synthesis, but I want to make an FM synthesizer that creates drum sounds, okay? That's my goal, basically, and, you know, Maybe that's not the goal that you start with, but it's at some point in the process for these projects, there should be a goal that clicks and like, this is what we're going to do and this is how the instrument's going to develop. What was that goal? Basically, make sure you state that as part of your presentation. Uh, give me insight into the development process. Do um, you need technical details? So don't talk about modulation synthesis without describing a little bit about how it works and the fact that you multiply this signal by this signal and that creates the FM effect, or uh, you guys, were exciter and resonator, basically the idea. That there's a there's a source sound, a burst of noise that then goes into these filters, and that creates the overall effect that we're hearing, right? Those sorts of things. Um, same thing with how, you know how additive synthesis works. Um, historical details. I'm looking for you to put this in context of. That's part of the reason for having you guys do research, right? Put this in context of people that have come before you doing these techniques, right? Um, if it's additive synthesis, you know, you could talk about organ stops and how that then evolves into uh, the synthesizer that involves into uh, experiments in additive synthesis that happened in the you know, 60s and 
people that were involved with that. You know, names, dates, pl places, those sorts of things are all fair game for the historical details. Um, then we get into your overall instrument design. Okay, uh, yes, this, these are sound producing instruments, so the sonic quality should be a factor in evalu evaluating whether you had a good uh, instrument design. Um, and it goes from rich, high quality sounds to dull and interesting, uninteresting sounds to fails to produce sounds. I've only had to use that fails to produce sound once in all my years teaching this, basically. But somebody got up here and their, their instrument literally would not make any sound. Can we all agree that that's, that's not acceptable for a computer music class? Yes? Okay. Um, I guess a word of warning. What happened was they were testing it on their computer and it worked just fine, but then they moved to the teaching station and they didn't test it on this station. So uh, as with any presentation, test the technology that you're actually going to be using during the presentation. Okay. Uh, learn that lesson now before you're on some all-important stage, whether it be senior research or a national conference. Or I've seen things blow up at national and international conferences too. So uh, test the technology with, that you're actually going to be using in the presentation. Okay. Um, interface and overall organization. Okay. So those are like the three prongs of your instrument design. Um, no one of those is going to totally kill your grade for the instrument design, but having you need to have all of them to be in the exemplary translation A category, okay. Um, let's see, on the back are just um, more generic presentation skills. I wanted to parse those out from the presentation content, you know, whether you spoke clearly, um, whether you used your time allotted, and we've talked about being in the 15 to 20 minute range for these so that we have time for all three presentations. Uh, if you clock in at eight minutes, that's way under time. But if you clock in at 25 minutes, well, I will, one, I'll, I'll stop you before you get to 25 minutes, but uh, be prepared for managing your time, okay? Um, and hopefully you see that there's multiple elements to the presentation, not just uh, your goals and your distribution of workload, but also technical details, historical details, and the demonstration of your instrument, you got to factor in time for all those things, okay? Um, and having everybody participate, okay? It's not acceptable for two people to sit on the sideline while one person gives the entire presentation. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that everyone needs to be talking for exactly five minutes each, but as long as it is apparent that everybody has their roles, knows what their role is, and that roles have been delegated for uh, the presentation. That's that's what I'm looking for. Okay. Uh, visual aids. Yes, I expect there to be visual aids, whether that is a PowerPoint presentation or a keynote presentation, or even uh, I've had people create a series of Max patches that basically breaks down the process, basically, and it's patch one, two, three, four, five, and culminating on the final instrument, basically. Uh, that can be effective as well. Uh, and maybe I should show, well, uh, remind me about screenshots at the end. OK, I'll come back to that. Um, audio examples, you, you should be able to give, a, it, it, you're designing instruments, you should be able to give a musical demonstration of your instrument in, in action, OK? Um, Happy birthday is acceptable, yeah, okay. Something simple. Something simple, uh, preferably in the public domain, so that when we record it and post it online, we'll have to pay copy. Although, uh, uh, yeah, I, I've gotten notices from YouTube sometimes where something is copyrighted and it says this is not, uh, yeah, we can't, you can't let this, I forget what the notice is that I get, basically. This includes copyrighted material and will not be public because, yeah. That does happen. Usually it's because someone's playing a song in class and giving an analysis of it. Technically that's fair use, but anyway, it's also YouTube, which is a big global thing. Anyway, they're protecting themselves more than us. Um, and existing excerpts. It, it would be nice to hear an existing excerpt uh, as well. Uh, at least one is acceptable. If you can work in multiple, uh, that's even better. Okay. Um, I think that's how I broke down the scale. Yeah, one is acceptable. More than that is exemplary. Okay. Um, does that mean that you play a seven-minute? Uh, I don't know. Let's like say Zappa track, Zappa tra yeah, or a Zanakis track, track, or you know, uh, Mac, one of Max Matthews' uh, original 
uh, compositions that he created for computer music way back in the 50s and 60s. Uh, you know, I don't, I, I don't think including an eight-minute ex excerpt is, is uh, what I'm looking for here. I'm looking for bits, okay? And uh, as I say all the time, when you're doing excerpts, the beginning is often not the best part to excerpt, right? Uh, sometimes the best part that makes the, 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 the point as well as you need it to be made is in you know, two minutes into the song, right? Um, so think about that as well, okay? Does this give you, uh, I don't know, does it, one, does the rubric make sense in terms of what all the required elements are? You had a question, Colton? Yeah, like for the song, like not the one we wanted to perform, though, but the bits and stuff that you wanted us to show. Um, yeah. Does it have to be a song that's made entirely with that or just something that has it? I think, no, something that has it in it, That's, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, want yeah. to make sure, if you're going to play a song or something, don't play it the first 30 seconds where the instrument or whatever isn't even heard yet. Make yeah. sure it's relevant to your actual... Yeah, yeah. Like, the entire, like not all the instruments have to be made. No, hmm. not... Just yeah, like, I mean, the, you could... There are examples that are like that where the whole thing is made out of... Uh, well, you guys referenced this Silicon Valley breakdown piece in your notes, basically. You can get a copy of the recording of that, basically, to play some examples of someone using physical modeling. And the more relevant it is to, as I said, you, you're you only responsible for implementing kind of like sub points, right? Um, so you don't have to, um, what was I going to say? Uh, the more relevant it is to the actual technique that you implemented, the better, right? So like if you, you, I'll use you guys as an example. If you decide to focus all your energy on frequency modulation, but you show an example of someone that's doing ring modulation, that's, a, that's, it's, that's relevant to a degree, but something that is frequency modulation would be more relevant, right? Okay. Um, so the more it, it shows the technique that you're emphasizing, the better. Okay. Um, let me think, what else? Any other questions? Screenshots? Screenshots, yeah. Uh, yeah, because sometimes the best way to uh, explain something is just to take a screenshot of your Max Patch and let's see if I can get this on real quick here. Doo -doo. Okay, so Max, I built my Max Patch. I like the way my Max Patch looks. I want to include this in my PowerPoint slide without opening my Max Patch. Okay, real simple. File, export image. It will take your Max Patch and it will save it as an, a PNG file which can then be used in your PowerPoint slides, okay? Um, that mean, I mean, one of the things I point out, uh, so this is a spectrogram, you know, if you want to show the this, this spectral difference between having a modulation frequency of two and a modulation frequency of 200, just build a max patch and export the image, basically. As soon as you stop it, it's gonna freeze the image and you can just export it, okay? Um, so yeah, use these user interface tools and that exporting image as a way to build uh, Technical diagrams for your slides. That make sense? Okay, that's the uh, something that is not always obvious to students starting out. Basically, is that you can do that. But again, file, export image. Okay. So Tuesday will be another work day. Bounce around to groups. Um, you can email me questions. You can email me patches if you want me to take a look at them over the weekend. Okay. Um, but. Uh, be, we're working toward presentations next Thursday, okay? Which I realize is a tight deadline, but I, I'm, I'm a big believer in repetition, doing it multiple times to get better at it, okay? All right, have a good weekend. I'll see you guys later. <laughs>